Hello and welcome to day two of the Razor Invitational Europe. Our final cup is at hand and well, the top 500 of yesterday will move on to this second day. Of course, the top 33, I believe it is, will move ahead to go to the final day to try and compete for that all-important prize pool. I'm your caster, Kramer 3, and I, of course, am joined by the um, Fantastic Four. You only see two of them now because we're also joined by a wonderful producer of Pepito and our brilliant observer of Swelder. But for those of you them who can talk, Ryan and Jack, how are you feeling about this one? Yeah, great. And of course, another day, another set of giveaways. Exclamation mark Pringles in the chat will give you your entry into winning the Pringles Tube. The 25-pack giveaway will be drawn at the end of game one. And of course, throughout the stream, you can drop exclamation mark ticket in the chat for every hour that you watch. You'll have an opportunity in an extra entry into winning a Razor Viper mouse. And of course, it doesn't stop there. 10 people that submit their clips via Fortnite on Twitter using hashtag your chance will get their opportunity to win themselves a Razor Viper mouse. And of course, you can head on over to razorinvitational.com where we're doing a giveaway worth thousands of dollars worth of prizes. Just go over to www.razorinvitational.com, click on the giveaways tab, and all is explained there. And yeah, having a look there at the tournament schedule, this is the second day. So it's playoff day of our final tournament number six. So top 500 teams now will battle it out to see who are going to be the top dogs, who are going to get into the top 33. The prize pool is there. They'll be battling it out for that 6,600 euro in cash. The 500 euro for the MVP, which will be voted for tomorrow by you guys. And the 570 euro in Razor products. Scoring, you can see there as well. 70 points for a victory royale and five points for a kill. So top 500 today, I had a quick look at a few of the players, see Naby Putrick in there already, you know, they finished, I believe, top of the leaderboard yesterday. Be interesting to see if they are going to join us today. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, you know, who's going to make the top 33 because, you know, usually you have a look at the names and you see, you know, some of the big names. Sometimes they don't even make it to the top 33. Sometimes there's an absolute blowout. Some underdogs come out of nowhere and they end up uh, putting up a really good fight so i'll be hoping to see some of that today without a doubt in just a moment of course we are going to a quick little break but once we return we'll be able to get straight into today or game one with the action
Tell you what, there's one of the few great things in life that we can kind of delve from casting, and it's hearing the panic in our producer's voice when he tries to tell us 3, 2, 1, live, but without further ado, <laughs> here we go straight into this first game. Of course, looks like a lot of players dropping fairly early on actually to try and get towards those hedges, that swamp, and to try and just enact what will end up being an absolute slaughter amongst these early teams, but without further ado, let's get straight into this. Absolutely, as we take a little bit of a detour right now, it seems to be the majority of the teams heading the south side of the battle bus instead of the north side. A lot of teams are going to be aiming towards Misty Meadows, Hunter's Haven, Lazy Lake, Retail Row, and Catty Corner. But there are two loot llamas in the area as well. A lot of players flooding towards Dirty Docks as we continue on forward. We're hearing a very annoying noise in the background, I can't lie. Someone's gliding. Ever so slowly, but we are going to jump into Faceless from Vertex. He's going to grab himself some early loot towards the south side of the desert. And of course, day two, it is going to be crunch time. Everyone looking to try and make their move and make their way on forward to that top 33. So you can expect some early kills as we already say goodbye to our first trio. But we are going to see a lot of players delving into the late game action. And I expect a lot of storm surges, especially from the get-go. Monster Muncher going to scoop up that blue bowl. So he's going to continue his way on forward. And for the time being, everyone looks quite content on their position. And we'll have to wait and see how things progress here. But already, we've lost eight players. Yeah, and already we lost eight players. I believe actually in our first game of the day yesterday, we've seen, you know, storm surge after... The second circle, which is really surprising because usually you don't see that on the first day. Usually you see that, you know, maybe on the second day, but definitely on the third day, people playing safe, people playing for placement. But it was just interesting to see yesterday, you know, that maybe people are taking this one a bit more serious because it is the last one, of course. It's your last chance to actually make a bit of money or indeed pick up some of those cool Razor peripherals. As now we see. Three players, or three trios, should I say, they're already gone. Demon Jake now towards Weeping Woods is just grouped up with his team. There is a team above and around uh, him that they need to be careful of. But for the time being, it seems like they're okay. He's going to need to pick up a shotgun if he can for any engagements because anything close range, he'll be pretty much useless. He's going to try and edit on through and have a look out the window maybe. Take a few pop shots. Just going to farm up. Just going to box himself in. Now down below as well. Tries to go for a left-hand peek there. It actually hits a few shots. But now it's going to have to back away. Needs to be careful. That wall is very, very low. Managed to take it anyway and then back away. Now his teammates are going to have to do all of the heavy lifting here. As I said, he doesn't really have a shotgun. So he won't be too much use. But he's making use of that green AR. He's tagging up players for a decent amount. His teammate... Epic Popes, he's taking a lot of damage. Going to have to drop him over. Maybe it's a shotgun. And indeed, he does. He'll pick it up. And now, Demon Jake will go to work to see what he can get done. And now, it's a few shots ringing out here or there as Jake will try to get up on top of this team. He's fighting with his teammate on very low HP of Pope. Has about shields either. It's going to really come down to him to do all the damage here. Him and Trix, both players with. Minimal amounts of damage done to them. Still with that half shields as well makes their life a bit easier. But getting Hickey, he'll try to do a bit of early damage. It's a very fast wall by Demon Jake, though. And as they try to push forward on to King Hickey there, it's going to be a bit of an early swarm. The shot guard, if it's placed well, that it is. He takes him down, but it's a trade. Demon Jake goes down. Does his teammates come on through to help out? It'll be an absolute slaughter between these two sides. As one of the ARs yet to find a kill. Absolutely. There is going to be a little bit of confusion the shots continue to rattle on through towards these players they are going to try and finish the job on one another but unfortunately they can't go and resurrect their teammates both teams very close by to each other and so they can't risk the push otherwise you know they risk all three players being eliminated so we can expect to see both of these players on screen to bleed out and for the time being everyone seems to be very content on their positioning i do hear some movement and in fact it is going to be Demon Jake that gets resurrected by Trix. And so now King, he'll be looking to try and get back up onto his feet as well. But unfortunately, it is already looking far too unlikely. He's going to get gunned down. And now this side reduced to just two. Demon Jake going to be back at his feet alongside Popez. But now is their time to strike. They've got the one-man advantage. They've just got to pressure off it for the time being, though. Everyone else seems to be quite happy with playing passive. There's still 81 players in the server. 
28 teams. Unconditionally, it's looking quite good. Uh, yeah, having a look now, we see Demon Jake. He's looking for Hottie, who has six builds here. Jumping around the tree stump, and Demon Jake's actually going to go down. And this time, he will be finished. He will be taking care of Hottie. Getting a bit of a refresh there, up to 74 HP. As now, he's going to have to box up. Has picked up a few mats for his trouble. Now, Demon Tricks is going to begin to push on out. Uh, 12 builds now for Hottie as he tries to go for maybe a right hand peek. Good oh. knock there onto Epic Popes. He was low HP regardless. Oh. Gonna now use the shotgun, do a little bit of damage. Now he's gonna edit on through and maybe get the finish. Now just faking it out a little bit as Demon Tricks is gonna begin to build around Epic Popes and go for the res. He has to get off it now as Hottie applies a little bit of pressure, tags him down very low. He will be getting up the refresh now. It has come in the full kill. On it come off as now up to 100 HP and 24 shield and actually rattles Demon Tricks there down to 69. And now needs to apply a little bit more pressure just on the builds above. Only 5 builds on Hottie and 10 builds on Tricks. So Tricks can build them out for the next while. But Hottie will be just trying to edit on down and maybe take a floor if he can. Ramp underneath goes with a shot charge. Shot comes out charging up. It's going to miss as Hottie now no builds. He can't take a wall or anything like that. But Demon Tricks, he's not looking too healthy on builds either. As now being surrounded by two different sides, Demon Tricks needs to try and get out of there if he can. He's all alone. Remember, Hottie's teammate is now here to help. As we hear that harpoon tagging down the walls, trying to get in on top, and he will go down. It's going to be another kill picked up there for Fexor and Hottie. And they've got three already. We're down to 27 trios. And in this lull, we'll have to see just how these teams fare. Again, we're not quite at the... Um, actually, we are at, we're about to hit this Storm Surge zone for the time being, especially if we don't see much contact between now and this second zone. So I fully expect to see a Storm Surge between this second and third area. But for the most part, these teams do have that kind of breath before the plunge where everyone's finished fighting for their POI. Everyone's kind of mid-rotation. And with that, they'll just farm up some materials where they can. They'll just get the odd weapon here or there get some ammo and really start awaiting this second, third zone where they can really start fighting. The only real place we are going to see fights is, surround, is around towards this Hunter's Haven where we see these teams congregate past with the zone and they're going to have to start fighting those already at the edge of this zone to try and cut out people's rotations and to try and make sure that everyone has a tough time trying to get ahead of one another. Yes, now, for the most part, as you mentioned, everyone going to play the passive game. It's died down completely. No one particularly looking for a gunfight they're just looking to farm on up and for the most part everyone seems quite content on that there's still 79 players within the server and we have lost a fair few trios but fortunately we still will have a lot of players in the server still Alti looking for some mats he's trying to farm but shots rattling from the distance will force him away ever so slightly as they continue to move on around on the outskirts of Weeping Woods, they'll just be looking for, of course, to farm the trees, get themselves some materials, and then they can move their way on forward. For Hottie, though, he doesn't really care all too much. He's just trying to build on up towards this new zone. Is, in fact, going to head into the zone. As it does only tick for one, it will not be that much of a problem. Everyone's just looking quite content right now as they move their way on forward. Still eight seconds until it forms. Everyone... Well, they are going to settle in quite nicely. Some a lot easier than others. And for this team on screen right now, they might just run into a bit of a problem because there's two trios up ahead and they could be waiting for their arrival. Yeah, could be just waiting and holding these teams in, but they're going to get into a car anyway and try and get out of the storm effect. So it is going to be pretty low on HP, so he needs to be careful as now they're going to get focused hard as the car is getting spammed as well. He needs to be careful that that doesn't explode because it'll take down all their builds. It might take a good chunk of HP off them with it. But for now, they are just sitting on top. They're going to spam back for the time being. Evan Almighty and Controller are going to be knocked as Controller is going to be taken down. Now, looks like Fexor, Iggy, and Hottie, they are just going to get in the sand, and they're just going to try and rotate away if they can, and I don't think the other trio have noticed just yet. Now, shots with a ring on true. Now, they have noticed, but Fexor is just going to try and get out of there while he can. He is the lowest of all, so he is in the most danger. But for now, 
we're just gonna have a look at the map everybody pretty you know spread out there's not too many teams on top of each other and it looks like this trio that we're applying the pressure they're just gonna back away and try and rotate which is probably the smart play again day two playoffs you want to be in the top 33 you need to play for placement so all these teams they're not going to be w keying like they were yesterday they're going to be playing smart they're going to see what they can do see if they can get further and further into the games you know and if they can pick up some placement points and some kills along the way then happy days exactly placement points are really everything and getting kills is great but the reality is you're going to have to desperately try and hold on because even though getting even though getting these kills is awesome, yeah, even though being able to shut out these players is great. The reality is it's the placement which is really gonna give you these points. Kills, it's gonna it's gonna separate you from say twenty-fourth and twenty-fifth, but you're not gonna break into that top ten, top thirty margin unless you get decent placements. And that is really what all these teams have to start fighting for. And as the storm surge comes in though, it looks like most of these teams who would be maybe necessarily playing a bit more passive and playing for placements, turns that idea properly on its head. Absolutely. Everyone, at least below, is going to have to go for some sort of aggression. Whether that's now or in a couple of seconds, they will have to make their way on forward. For this team, though, just in stealthy stronghold, waiting patiently. They found themselves in a great position, but of course, lots of noise being made around them. Car is going to be set alight by the sounds of things, and so they could be put under some threat if they're not careful. But for the time being, they are slightly above that damage threshold, but swiftly... As you mentioned, Peter, they could be put under it. You know, the the, pri uh, the point, rather, the the cap, I guess, changes quite frequently. And so players have got to be very cautious with this. I think they realise at this point in time, they're going to have to make their way somewhere else. And they will do so quite contently. They're still 92 above. And as we flip over to Fox, he's even closer to that margin. But for him and his team, they are able to find themselves... Their way on forward as the zone continues to collapse. They do have a fair bit of time ahead of them. And they have just picked up some crystals. So this won't be a problem for them. They will just be able to simply move on forward. And oh, they do in fact spot a player. Now this is where things could get interesting. Because this zone will quickly tick for two if they're not careful enough. And they realise that they can just trap them outside the zone. And wait for them to come on in if they choose, uh, so wish to do so. Excuse me. And so for now, though, still 76 players in this server as the second zone will move its way on in. And we find out where everyone will have to head for the third one. We'll have to wait and see. But everyone quite content right now as we look on over towards a large structure. It seems to be everyone getting involved right now towards the right-hand side of this zone. Everyone going to get jumped on. And in fact, it is going to be a swift knock. Josh going to pick up the knock and the finish. And now... For him and his duo, they are going to have a bit of a problem. Especially when the Storm Surge goes active. At least they're above and so it's not as much pressure as you'd think. It could have been scary though. It really, really could have. And now there's going to be a second wave of shots rattling on off. They do spot out the man and they will be taken down swiftly though. Another trio bites their dust. We're down to 70 players. We're down to 25 teams. Things are tense. Yeah, things are really heating up here today. You know, we see now Storm Surge is gone. 69 players are left in the server. We see, what, 25 trios are left. As now, the third zone is going to start moving in around 30 seconds. So, everybody is going to have to get in and around Pleasant Park. We see a lot of teams are there already. I'd say the majority of teams are already in the zone. Uh, if not very close to it. So I don't think there's going to be too far rotation for anyone. Uh, it's just about what really goes on here towards Pleasant because everybody's going to be focused on each other. If you know, you're know you trying to rotate in, it's going to be a very hard place to rotate into, especially because there's so many teams already there. But now we see Stealthy Stronghold, another very populated area. A lot of people on the outskirts, not too many people towards the inside is Rumex. His teammate is actually going to be dropped through a box and Cisalvo is going to be taken down. Rumex now has to try and get up and get away. Demon2k is going to pick up the final kill on that one. So now Liwa and Rumex, they're in a little bit of trouble. They're just going to build up, build away. They need to be careful. I believe it was a double harpoon that actually got uh, their teammate down. So, you know, double harpoon <laughs> it takes away two, you know, wooden builds straight away. Dropped them down, took the kill. And now Rumix and Liwa, they're without their teammate. 
they could be in a little bit of trouble and this is exactly what's going to happen the spam and the harpoon now again trying to take Rumix down and do the exact same thing that they did to his teammate but for the most part now he's just building out he's just building away from it and he's just trying to play a little bit safe well that down we look over at Rumix as well just trying to take out these players wherever they can and for the most part they do just stagnate they hover about for the time being so wait to see how they'll fare Again, as, as mentioned before, it's that breath before the plunge, it's that calm before the storm. We've got Monster Muncher 77, what a username, able to shut down a member as well in the rotation. But in this quiet, everyone is just going to get into the best position they can. Rubex, of course, at a disadvantage, having his teammate falling. But for the most part, at least he'll be safe for the next zone. Again, a few shots around either way. These rifles just trying to catch out members who, of course, out a bit late on their rotation. That they are. The whole team is wiped, but... Griffin didn't quite get that kill. Instead, he's just going to have to try and snipe the damage that others have been doing onto him. That being said, though, he'll lose his shields to a stray bullet. So take his moment to just burn some utility. Absolutely. They are going to start stacking on up now as players will be forced closer and closer together. As you mentioned, Pete, you know, it is that silent part of the game where nothing too substantial happens. This is just everyone going to get squished closer and closer together. And then we're going to get to a point where it all erupts and everyone will move their way on into each other's boxes. And we might just see that now. Rumex actually going to have a bit of pressure applied to him. We'll try to build back on up. But looking, there are in fact three players that have just built right on next to him. And so he might actually be saved. Everyone's going to turn their attention, of course, to the trio. But looking at it right now. Everyone seems to be quite content as they have to make their way on through around Pleasant Park and towards the northeast or northwest, excuse me, side of the zone. As two's going to fire off a shot, charged shotgun isn't going to deliver, and that's going to force him away. He's going to get shot in the back. He's got to be careful, and he has his back turned at the wrong time. Two players swarm him. They will pick up the kill, and with that, we're dropped to 57. There's another storm surge warning. Everyone seems to be out in the open, and this is where. Players have got to be cautious. They are going to try and spam their way on through. But everyone seems to be quite content inside the zone right now. Still over half the lobby in the server. Things are going to come down to the wire very, very shortly. But for the time being, everyone just going to hold on. Yeah, just going to hold on. Now, we see we have to lose four more players before that storm surge goes away. As that team were one below, but now are 53 above. So must be hitting a few shots. as fact, store now. He's going to manage to get a knock, I believe, as actually it was actually his teammate that went down. It's not good at all as he tries to build out. He's trying to just hold the bills from everywhere. And he's trying to get out of this box if he can at all possible. He is being put under all sorts of pressure. But for the moment, he's doing a good job of surviving. He's doing a good job of getting away. He's burning through materials like they're absolutely nothing though. As now 51 HP, he goes for a shotgun shot as he won't get it done. He is going to be taken down. He is going to be taken out. With five kills, they are going to be eliminated. We are now underneath that threshold of 50 players. So, for the most part, everybody is going to be relaxed for the time being. The fifth zone is going to begin to form. And Tonisk and Co., they are just going to begin their early rotation into the new zone. The time being, let's see how they fare. Making their way around, making their way on forward. Just trying to catch out the odd member wherever possible. For the most part, these players, as they try to converge to this new zone, they're going to be focused on moving rather than shooting. And we see that a lot now. We don't actually hear much shots ringing out. Instead, for the most part, it's going to be uh, Paxian here. I think that's how you say it. Paxian trying to get the old bit of utility to help him out. He's got four floppers, which is going to make his life a lot easier should it come to a heal off. And again, it's these teams, all of which with a mind for the late game. That storm starts moving. These players get ready for a fight. And Paxian, he knows there's players around him, but he can't quite fight them just yet. Instead, they continue with their little engagements for the time being. Neither wanting to commit to a full fight as they make their way around. And again, they just move their way in towards this zone, congregating to the edge of it as they keep stacking up together, all on their own builds, all looking to just take their own position in their own box before they just ring out holy hell into what will be this sixth to ninth round. Absolutely. Things are going to get quite quite intense now because everyone forced closer and closer together and of course 
that will stir the pot that little bit more. Gunfights will erupt. 10 seconds until the fifth zone moves in completely. And we're back into our sixth. As you mentioned, Peter, it is going to be a brawl in the next couple of storm circles. They are just going to flood on in. Kills are going to be everywhere. And they are going to have to move right back across Pleasant Park. And for the majority of these teams, it isn't going to be a hard task to have. Paxion does find a tag, nothing too substantial. Will try and build his way on up, has some height. Spots out the man, gets the wall. Unfortunately, the wall will mean nothing in this scenario. Fires off yet another shot. Going to try and do a bit more. Big damage dealt. He's dropped to 65. He's got the floppers and minis to assist him. 45 players in the server. Players are going to be dropping like flies very, very shortly as they now have a minute to rotate on in towards this thick zone. And now we're going to see another Storm Surge become active. We're just going to see now who has to apply the pressure. Paxton doing a lot of damage there. Hitting a few headshots as well. I believe one player has gone down as well. Terren, his teammate, is actually falling fleck and picking up that one. As now he's just going to try and tarp in if he can. He's taking a little bit more damage. Lost a good bit of his shield. Just going to try and keep tarping in, keep tarping in. In this six zone there are people above him so that's why he needs to place those ramps above his head because he does not want to get laser focused by those guys that are above as now i'm gonna try and edit on through and get towards his teammate gibbon uh vertex faces is going to be knocked and is going to be taken down ot josh picking up another knock as well as paxton is going to drop down a few more levels still group up with his teammate his teammate is very very low given needs to maybe heal up a flopper is going to be dropped over to him but he's going to use a splash instead storm surge going to become active as now players need to get a move on we need to go down to i believe 30 players before that storm surge goes away we're already down to 32 it won't be up for much longer especially with the way things are going everything is getting a little bit hectic in here rengu is going to go down now the storm surge is gone there's two more players have been eliminated pg gachu is going down and paxton he's going to have to drop down another level they were on height a few minutes ago and now they're being focused that hard that they just have to keep dropping and dropping and i wouldn't be surprised if they go ultimate low ground in the next few minutes as now fast and ballo they're on the ultimate low ground. They're just in their builds for the time being. Having a look around. Seeing if they can spot anyone out. Going to try and go for an edit. Maybe trap somebody in if they can at all possible. The, he's not going to be able to do so. As now the 8th zone is going to be into move. We're down to 23 players. And 12 trios left in the server. Again, it's absolute chaos ringing out right now. Spurs get down left, right, and centre. 12 teams left. 22 players left standing. But as the knocks come in, we're going to see that number shrink down very, very quickly. Only 10 teams left now. 18 players left standing. Josh with, I think, a full kill on a team right there. Killing all three members as Flecken will move on forward. With the high ground right now, he is going to be in such an advantageous position moving forward. And again, with this ninth zone hitting in just a couple of seconds. It's going to go from bad to worse for these teams in the bowels of these builds. Not on the higher ground, not on that ultimate low ground. And it really will play to their disadvantage right now with the compact, with the contact and with the combat reckoning from either angle. For now, Black will continue to rain shots down to those below him. Able to tag down one there, able to finish the job as well as we we'll continue trying to catch out some of these players. Just trying to do that little bit of damage to pull himself on ahead. So he continues to put these builds down. We await for this new zone to come on through again. Just a couple of seconds now before it completely closes on in. As it looks like Flecken will try to jump on down. Trying to catch out some of these members. Unable to do so though. But the four teams are standing. It looks like we are about to see the victor anointed in just a moment. Absolutely. 50 seconds until the zone closes in fully. This is going to be crunch time for everyone right now. Flecken going to apply the pressure. It's teammate Diablo to pick up the kill. They're already up to four between them. As Diablo hunting for more. He's going to try and take the roof. But unfortunately, he is only going to be successful with the cone as he continues to move on in, move on forward. And he is looking for some damage. Chug Splash used. He's able to catch it. Bass going to drop one. There's five players, two teams. And I do believe Ballo has just fallen. And so Diablo and Bass looking sharp. And it will be them to take the game. Diablo to find it. A victory royale. It is going to be a six kill game for them. And of course, they take home all the points for the victory as well. And with that, they'll be able to move themselves swiftly up the leaderboard. A great first game, but of course, it's only the beginning. We've still got four games yet to go, but I mean, what a start for them.
a great start like <laughs> no better start you know you're starting off with a win that's exactly what you're here to do and a six kill win i believe so yeah they're looking at 100 points already after game number one which is pretty it's a pretty good start but as we all know uh for those of you guys at home if you have been watching you'll know as well but just in case you don't you need more than that you need to you know get around maybe 200 i'd say 200 is probably the threshold maybe even a little bit more i'd say maybe 250 300 you know just to be safe of course the top 33 teams will advance into tomorrow's finals but you know we see there that in that intel moments flecken just dominating there he was just really really aggressive he came out on top and you know a good start to the day for them without a doubt and of course we go over to look at our winner of the pringles giveaway speechy what a name you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna win yourself some pringles you can see these behind me here it's a 25 pack and well you'll love them i know that me and my family absolutely did um the bad thing enough they're actually all empty but you know what that just means that they're a good product so <laughs> we're gonna go <laughs> to a quick little break but once we return we'll bring you game two
Hello and welcome back. We're about to get started into game two of the Razor Invitational Europe, but of course we are going to talk about that first game that we saw earlier on. And I tell you what, over the course of this tournament, we've definitely seen a shifting meta from what has been some just constant fighting to a more disciplined play style towards an area where we see players just constantly working for this placement over these kills. And well, it hasn't worked out. We'll have to see, but I don't know, Jack, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally agree in the fact that, you know, it's 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 interesting. We saw at the beginning, you know, day one or maybe cut one, excuse me. We saw a lot more aggression, a lot more people just pursuing the, the, the W key, just, you know, having fun, holding it, trying to shoot people. People quickly realized through the weeks there's money on the line. 6,600 euros split between the top three teams. People then realize, hold the phone. We gotta, we gotta actually play this like, uh, like our life depends on it because that is a lot of money to win. Considering this is a community event, you know, there's no profit being made from Razor. This quite literally is their generosity, their six thousand six hundred euros. They're pouring in weekly to this as well. So, you know, props to Razor where it's due. But of course, you know, it's it's six thousand six hundred euros. I don't think you can you can dull it down in any way. You are playing for an incredible amount of money. You've got to you've got to bring your A game, otherwise you just won't win. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, really it's really nice of Razor, you know, and indeed all the partners uh, to put on an event like this, especially, you know, you see all on Twitter, you know, Fortnite pros complaining about uh, how the prize pool is being deducted in every tournament they play in. It's nice to see a community event being put on like this. But speaking of the community event, we are going to get back into it and we are going to have a quick look again. Demon Jake is in this lobby. They were in our last game. As there we have a look, everybody is just going to get off the battle bus, go to their intended destinations. I don't think we're going to see too much action off the rip. I think everybody is going to be fairly spread out. Uh, maybe, you know, we might see a few places contested, but I'd say we'll probably have around maybe 80 players left uh, when the first zone starts to move on in. Without a doubt, and we'll just see how these teams fare in what will be this early kind of POI fight between all these members. As for the time being, it's going to be a bit of a split around the map, a fairly even disparity and displacement of players. As it looks like Gamma Kami is ready for players towards this dirty dog split. That's actually caught out anyone, so instead he'll back away. He doesn't have any shields, so there's no real time to be fighting, as he will just actually be miles away from his teammates as well. So he really is just going for a kind of resource-oriented build, a resource-oriented drop, as they'll just take his time moving around the map. Absolutely, and for the time being, well, everyone's going to be quite happy posted up in their positions. They're not going to try and over-aggress all too much. They don't particularly want to risk their lives just yet. We see... The kill feed, well, it's going to trickle in a couple of kills here and there, but nothing too substantial. The majority of players holding on for the time being. The real question is, though, will we see a storm surge in the early stages? Clem, put a couple players out. Nothing too substantial. He's only going to try and wear down the builds. It's nothing too much. Finds the lever shotgun. And now it can look to a press. He's dropped the green SMG over to Vipe, who's now going to rattle off the gas canister. They're all going to aggress. Oh, Clem catches the man out. He knows that he's there. He's up close and personal. The lever shotgun just will not work. He now finally hits the shot, and he's done a bit of damage. He's going to find a second. And with that, he's delivered a lovely 2k. His teammate has gone down. They will be able to resurrect him. And is Vipe on one point of health? Yeah, I think so. He's, he's, he's alive. He's, on, he's he's literally I've never I, I think he is one HP. He must be. Well, luck of the draw and Clem I think he knows he's on stream, giving us a bit of a dance. I think he knows at this point. He must know. Here's with another emote, Clem. Come on, let's see it. I think it's just a BM he's giving out ah, there. The BM, you know? Yeah, it might yeah. be, it might be. You'd love to see it. But uh, you know, good start for them. Actually, I thought Clem was gonna be punished there after missing that shotgun shot. Yeah. He got into the box there. Rattled off a lever shotgun shot and it went absolutely nowhere. He did uh, some good damage to the build, but you know, you need to do damage to the player. And um, eventually, his teammate did come to help him out. But now, first zone, still a minute and 30 seconds away from moving in. And we're actually already down to 82 players, so we've already lost 16. We've already lost two trios. Um, so, you know, it's a. Uh, 
pretty interesting because I did not expect it to be that quick. I didn't expect us to be down 17 players and now three trios in the first few moments of the game. I thought people might be a bit more spread out than that. But, of course, it all depends on, you know, where each trio wants to land. Because, you know, if you all want to land on, uh, you know, the same area, you know, it's going to be contested. You're going to have to take the fights early on. And um, people landing at POIs, they're going to find a, a little bit of trouble. They're going to find more players that they're going to have to deal with rather than these players that will land at, you know, so-called scavenger rates. Wolfie is going to go down and we're going to get under 79 players as now King Dishy is going to be taken care of. We've lost five trios all in all as Karlik is going to be taken down by Valerie Phoenix. And now Epic Popes and his trio, they are going to be put under a little bit of pressure by a player now just above this house in Weeping Woods. But for the time being, they are just going to farm up. They're just going to play it safe and they should be able to survive for the time being anyway. As for now. For now we, oh. oh, go on. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, my apologies. Though. You know when you start talking, realize your mic's muted. So you go to start talking again before realizing you actually haven't unmuted your mic. Um, <laughs> one of those awkward moments. Um, but yeah, for, <laughs> for now, it's going to be these players towards Crazy Lake again. Nothing too substantial in terms of contact. Instead, they're just going to speak to these AI. They're going to try and just make their lives a bit easier as they move around the board. Nothing too substantial. In terms of loot, either again with that sniper, we should see Yadan We, I think that's how you say it, try to get these early and long range jewels over towards the lake. But little does he know, when he moves over towards this new zone, he is going to have to worry about these players ready for him on the other side of that zone. A few stray shots ring out either way, and that should warn him that there are players to worry about for the time being. As there goes one of them from user, I'm not going to say that name, as, as Yadani will try to shut him down. Unable to do so for the time being, as he'll make his way back around again. Just continuing to farm up Matson. Fairly disciplined as well to not actually commit to any of these fights, but to, to instead just continue farming despite all the players around him having to ring out a few shots. While we have this moment of silence, may I remind you we've still got another giveaway going on today, the Razor Viper Mouse. Of course, you can drop the exclamation mark ticket in the chat, as Peter correctly demonstrates. There is obviously an opportunity for every 10 minutes you watch, you get a point, six points for a ticket. And the maximum you can get is six tickets over the course of this weekend. For the time being, though, Trull going to rattle off a shot with the RPG. Looking to do some damage. Actually nearly finding himself the wall. But he will have to continue to aggress. He's going to try and burn through everything he can right now. Spots out the man. Going to continue to push on through. Actually finds his way through the staircase. And will finish the first. But he's got another player to be careful of. But he's going to dismantle off his HP quite quickly. Drops around 50 points of health as Trull will pick up the kill. He'll look to continue to re-aggress on this player. Leave a shotgun in hand as he aggresses on through. Going to continue to find it. But actually... Pushes his way through as the others do, but unfortunately, his time is imminent. 70 players on the server. 25 teams left remaining. Slurpy Swamp finally clear, but for everyone else, well, the action will only just begin now. Still got well over two-thirds of the lobby remaining. There's still plenty of opportunity for everyone to get back into this game. But for now, everyone seems to be quite content on what they're up to. Yeah, everybody seems happy enough what is going on. Everybody seems to be just farming up. Nobody's really taking any engagements. Everybody's just, you know, trying to get into the zone, try and keep on moving. As now we are going to jump into POV of Nipsey, Owen and Keats. As they are just going to farm up. Now a little bit of Dusty. As now they are going to have a look over. There is another team over now at the Butter Barn that they could engage with if they want. But for now, I think these boys are happy enough just where they are. Just firing off a few pop shots. And again, you know, it's going to be like this early on in every game. Everybody wants to play for placement. Nobody wants to get aggressive. Everybody's going to be taking their time. They're going to be planning out their attacks at all times. So, you know, you don't want to be caught out in the open. You don't want to be going down early without picking up any of those placement points. So, we're, that's what we're going to see. We're just going to see teams, you know, try and not take any really early engagements. Just get into the zone, get a decent position. Uh, so, it's not too far that you have to rotate as Nipsey is going to succumb to a little bit of pressure. Now, towards 
Colossal Coliseum. But it looks like his team, they're just going to farm up this house. They're just going to take it, put walls down, and they're just going to sit and wait for the next zone to form. Well, now, with the players waiting for this new zone to form, it gives them a chance to just catch out this early position. And for the most part, they are just going to sit back. They'll relax. They'll wait to see who comes their way as they take their time. Again, farming up materials, because these materials, even though they may not seem too crucial now, we've seen time and time again, teams that's towards the ending kind of segments of a game, where they've had to try and build their way up to maintain high ground, to just run out of materials, drop to the ground, and die from full damage. And we've even seen teams have their platforms shot out from underneath them, because they're delegated down to just wood builds. So these teams really need to be vigilant of what they can and can't get away with building. And for now, it looks like yeah, was going to just continue farming up for the time being. Elsewhere, though, we do have Phoenix trying to get a bit of early damage, but he is outside that zone. He's going to have to move on forward, and the players around him, they're going to figure that out soon enough as well. So continue trying to just get up to the high ground, use that bounce pad, and into the zone, he'll go. Absolutely, they are going to continue to press on forward. They do want to at least keep some of the HP, but of course, when they get out of this zone, they've got another 1 minute and 10 to move even further north, further north, excuse me, upwards of Hunter's Haven towards the second zone. He's going to drop a medkit on across Phoenix. Actually, going to hear a shot. Chuck Splash is going to be used across the board. It's continuing to get fired at. But fortunately for them, they have the zone on their side. In fact, Cynix just picked up the knock. I assume he's just headshot him. And now the team realize, hold on. Let's go and push this because we've got plenty of opportunity. They spot the man on the hill. They'll continue to try and spam him on down. But, of course, they've got to be careful of the people more ahead. He is actually going to go for the aggression, though. Phoenix is going to focus on the man in front while the remaining two players on his team focus on the player behind. And the man is spotted. Edit's coming on through an intense 1v1. Of course, Phoenix, all he has to do now is just hold on. Beautiful bit of editing. Finds himself the kill. And his teammates find their way on forward. Very well played. I'm looking at Hio's HP though. Or Hijo. His HP. And he might just get knocked to Storm if he's not too careful. I think he might just survive though. He will. And now this team. Well, it's only just started because they've got another Storm to outmaneuver. And unfortunately, it really will not be on their side. I think they're on the quick side as well. Which will put them immediately in the Storm. And that will mean that they take more damage. But for now though. Everyone quite content. We dropped to 60 players within the server. But everyone seems to be quite happy and relaxed with how everything's going so far. As you expect, you know, there's kills here and there through the kill feed. But a lot more players have dropped in this game than they did the last. But still, we're going to expect a very jam-packed end game by the looks of things. And yeah, no, you know, these teams, they're on the quick side, really. So we see Hijo just managed to pop and make it there as well. So... He will just about survive. I thought it might get a little bit unlucky for him because, you know, he just got out of the storm and he was on, like, in around 10 HP. And if he had no make it, he could have been in an awful lot of trouble. He would have actually just went down and died. But the healing was there, was available. A lot of healing, actually, on Gamma Kami. He's running six splashes, six minis, and one big pot, often just for the AR and the purple charge shotgun is now... Phoenix and his trio, we're just going to see them rotate in. Not too much going on. Wavy Chips is going to be knocked. Elena going to be knocked as well. Same with Kane. Elena is going to be finished off. We're just losing a few players now, bit by bit. We're down to 56. So, actually, this lobby being a lot faster than I expected. Tyson 2x is going to be taken down. Or knocked, at least, by Speechy. As now... Beachy is actually going to be knocked, and it's going to be Mr. Savage that picks up that one. Interesting to see that they are in this lobby. As now, we're just going to see this trio rotate in. Just, it's pretty simple than that. There's not really too much we can talk about. There's not really too much we can commentate on. Uh, other than they're rotating in. They're going to get into the zone. They're going to try not to take damage, and now they're going to WG. They see somebody maybe in a build. They see a sandball trying to get out, trying to stay alive. But for the most part, it looks like they are going to get away. Flecken, who I believe picked up the victory in the last game, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be knocked there. It's interesting to see that they are also in this game. So we'll be hoping that Flecken can get picked up and maybe pick up another victory. But would look a bit out of reach at this stage. 
at the time. A bit of shots go out either way, and just like that, I love to take so much damage as well. Only just trying to struggle to survive. He'll drop those, or he'll slam into those really small slurps just to try and get some reminiscence of a shield. But for the time being, his teammates are being swarmed. There's damage done either way, but as of right now, Bossar and Co. really look like they're going to be on top for the time being. All of them looking to just swarm on top of these members. All of them looking to just go ahead and take this positioning. And so they continue forcing players on away. They'll look for additional damage and a chance to find some early kills because, bear in mind, Bossa, none of his team actually have kills yet. They've been going for placement, they've been going for a chance to farm up. And as Bossa gets taken down instantaneously, he is actually boxed by someone else. He'll try and get away and do so for the time being, though, as his teammates continue to fight as well. All of them losing, losing their shields. Bossa executed in this box, and the team's been able to turn around admirably. Absolutely, things are popping off right now. Everyone across the server looking to hold on right now for the time being. Two seconds until the third zone will move on in one minute and 27 seconds remaining until it will reach its logical conclusion. But everyone firing shots off right now, not catching a lot of the action, but definitely people are going to be taking damage here and there as Trulex finds a kill onto Nipsey Phoenix. Gonna have to pop himself a couple of minis, of course. The big shield alongside that as well. But he is going to be engulfed by the storm. And now he has to move on forward. He does tick once. Fortunately, he will continue to move on forward. The question is, though, is he going to find anything? He'll just go with his team. They're going to sand a tunnel on through. Get towards this new zone quite contently using this rotational feature. And, of course, he has the cabbages to heal on up as well should he need to. They are going to move on in. It's a free rotation, of course, with it being reintroduced last week, I do believe. Very prime opportunity for everyone to just move on around. And for now, though, it's looking grand. It's looking great. Everyone seems to be quite happy with their positioning as they are going to jump on up. They find themselves some early damage. Big shot coming on out. Phoenix going to continue to oppress. And everyone seems to be quite content on rotating on in. They spot some players out low HP within the picture. But will they be able to deliver and put them on the canvas? Is Phoenix actually going to take huge amounts of damage? Drop to 23 and in fact will be not from a distance. Not opting to use builds whatsoever. And he'll be taken out of this game. And yeah, we've seen a good knock there. He actually uh, ran out of builds there. So just ran out of builds. Could not, you know, box himself in or at least build a wall in between himself and his attacker and he went down because of it as now stompy and pink they're gonna apply a little bit of pressure they've already taken down owen's teammates as now they begin to apply the pressure on the man boxed up now for the time being it looks like stompy and pink they've actually relaxed they've uh, eased up on the diesel as now we see eight kills for them already as now owen needs to be a little bit careful because we see they might be actually putting a lot of pressure on him. You say Luke is going to be taken down. There's now Vitality Stompy is just going to begin to tarp on in and building at some speed now, moving on in. But he's being relatively uncontested. Just wanted to get into the zone, wants to build a little pathway. Now is going to go back and turn his attention maybe to own as Hard Max going to be dropped over as well. A lot of builds there. In the possession of Stumpy, as we see, actually, Spectre is going to be knocked. It's actually going to be Mr. Savage that's going to be knocked over there in that box. Flecken and Spectre are going to be taken care of, though, as I drop will pick up that kill. Four seconds until this zone begins to move, as now the fourth zone has formed and the Storm Eye is shrinking. So, BA Art, they're in a decent spot. They could apply. A lot of pressure here to these teams rotating in, especially Mr. Savage and I drop as we're actually going to see a reboot coming off in Pleasant Park. Fairly unusual, I suppose. It's not really too contested over there, and the pink team have built around it. There's now be or trying to look for maybe a sniper if he can uh, find it. I'm being. They're just going to rotate in. There's not going to be too many pop shots going on. And. Yeah, everybody is pretty happy enough just rotating in. Without a doubt, for the time being, we'll have to wait to see just how they fare moving forward. As it's going to be a rough old push ahead again. Let's get ready. Yeah, with this zone, it's taking on down as well. Look at the 15 teams left as well, 36 players. It wouldn't surprise me if we see a storm surge any moment now. As for the most part, 
teams are going to try and ring out a few shots here or there. Again, it's the odd down. Just making sure that people have a tough time attempting to hold. And just a second, we'll see how they fare. Fish goes out either way. Again, they, uh, he is just trying to continue doing damage and just, just trying to shoot down on players, but he's vigilant of players above him. Ready for that edit, making sure that there's no one around him as he gets ready to fight. A nice snipe Ooh. there, finding the centerpiece of someone's chest as all of that push comes through. Everyone seeming a little too silent right now. No one really doing all too much. Of course, the rotations will be coming on in. Everyone going to try and give it their all in this scenario and at least try and hold off the placements. And that's why we're going to see barely any movement for the time being. Shots going to continue to rattle on through. The builds are going to get punctured from these AR rounds. That's by the looks of things, though, everyone seems to be quite happy with how things are going. He spots out the man inside the box. He's saying, guys, if you could shoot the wall down, I can snipe him. I'm just going to get the information on where they are for now, though. There's a player standing still. Go. Bang. Shot. Unfortunate. Miss. And now, while well, they have found one, it isn't going to be enough for them. They are on three kills between them right now. Shot's going to continue to rattle these builds, but nothing too substantial happening as the fifth zone closes in. You've got 20 seconds until it fully forms, and then everyone's going to have to make their move back across to find themselves in the new zone. And for now, though, everyone posted up, ready, and waiting to go. Ready and waiting to go is right. Sixth storm begins to form. And actually, everybody's on the good side of it. So now, you know, we're going to see 20 seconds until everybody rotates in. Nobody has to go too far at all. Everybody is ready and waiting i presume everybody's planning their route accordingly as now it's going to be spam coming in through we're here on sharpted saying nasty who are up on the high ground as now we are gonna see what is gonna happen there's a lot of spam into these bills coming on a lot of pressure onto this yellow team for the time being but now having a look everybody's gonna rotate everybody's gonna be trying to use those bounce pads accordingly as now we see just a flood of people just running all the way towards the zone if they can at all possible there's a lot of names in there very recognizable names at that as now we are gonna see all hell break loose because everybody is on different levels everybody is going to be dropping onto each other's levels and they shot there by actually doing a lot of damage to piccolino up on top of that high ground pink gonna pick up a kill here on gonna find a kill as well as now for the time being as now i drop we'll find a knock on to outplay Asli trying to have a shot if at all possible he's getting spammed down into builds need to be careful he's trying to drop down and take as little fall damage as possible he's actually going to drop down and take none as the seventh zone is going to begin to form and now they're going to see what is going to happen? Zane is actually going to be knocked now. Actually, could get the revive off, and indeed he will, I think. Actually, he gets off it there now, and he needs to pick up his teammate and actually throw him towards the zone. And he's wasted a good bit of time here, but I think that the build is actually broken out there, and he might actually take a good bit of fall damage there. Actually, Zane is going to go down as now we wait. 11 trios left in the server, 23 players alive. Let's see what's going to happen. Again, as you mentioned earlier, it is a star-studded lineup of players from all different teams right now. Aseli, he'll take a substantial amount of damage with just 10 HP trying to get his way on out. He does have the utility to heal up, but will he be able to use it? This is a real question. No, he won't. He is caught out by Vilex there as he'll full half done the man finish the job. But now, Remp Osad again, just going for the rat play now. He's just going to look to hide behind these places, this position, and try and get the best placement he can. Unfortunately, he's caught out. He's spotted and finished. And with that, it will end up going into nine teams left. 19 players left standing again. Tohaj again on the high ground, trying to bring out shots down to anyone below him. And this is where the materials you have comes in so, so important. He'll continue bringing out shots down to those below him, just trying to hammer down into those boxes, trying to make sure that no one stays in the same place for an extended period of time as he will continue just form up this harassment on these players. Absolutely. 13 players, eight 
teams as we now look into the action. Look on forward. Tohaj, the unfortunate team that seems to can't get any done anything done in finals day, but most certainly are turning up right now as in playoff stages they are looking to make their mark once again there is going to be a chug splash picked up unfortunately it was just only one within the stack and so i'll have to use it immediately so has still going to keep this hype though as the night zone closes on in one minute until it fully closes after i'm going to pick up a quick kill he's going to hear shots rattling on out his pink that balls and now the aggression continues. Tohaj still very much comfortably sitting on height as everyone gets spammed down from above. There's already not players left, right, and center. Tohaj applied the pressure. Half time going to try and do what he can best, but unfortunately, it will not be enough because he's taken down to the storm. There's three players, two or three players, two teams, excuse me. Tohaj and Jindawi versus the only man remaining. I drop them down below, and I think it's safe to say his time is imminent. They both drop, drop on down, excuse me. And Tohash will find the kill. Seven kills between these two. Obviously, Percolino, we can't see how many kills he's got just yet. But a very good game and a very big victory of Royale under their belts in game number two. Yeah, a really good victory. You know, we've seen a lot of Tohash and Jendui in their trio. We always seem to see them on finals day. But, you know, it's nice to see them having a little bit of luck on finals day. They don't have the best of luck. They uh, always make it there. But, you know, they do struggle as now we see... You know, just Intel moments. We're going to see the replay here. Astley just trying to get on down, trying to get up close and personal with someone, trying to find a little bit of health if he can. But it go down. And there is Piccolino, or Percolino, excuse me, Gendui and Tohaj, your eventual winners, just on the high ground from the later stages throughout, just spamming down onto the bills below. I believe Idrop had a good game down on the low ground as well. He picked up a few kills here and there as Tohaj Gendui just continued to spam down. Another kill picked up there. They're on six kills for the moment in this 1v2. So they finished on seven. So a seven kill victory. It's pretty huge. It's a pretty good start. You know, I don't know how they got on in game number one, but in game number two, a victory nonetheless. Here's the thing, unlike that first day, the second day means absolutely everything on all games. On the first day, if you did one good game with a considerable amount of uh, kills, then you're pretty much done. You don't actually have to play as well on every single game for the first day. It's the second day where you really actually have to up the antics, play well, and get kills for every single, well, every single round. Again, start to finish, you need to be good, you need to be consistent, and even more so on the third day. So for now, it's where consistency really comes in to shine. Whether or not these teams can show their consistency, we'll have to see because we know it's a quick little break. But we'll be back in about five minutes or so with game three.
Oh, welcome back, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. Nonetheless, game three underway. And just a little reminder to everyone in the chat right now. You know, you might have seen last game. Savage was in our game. And of course, you all want to watch the professionals, but you've got to realize this is a community event, meaning that we have to watch some of the underdogs as well. And you know Savage is a great player and will most likely make it to tomorrow. And so... There's no real need to watch him now, so just because he interacted with you once in Twitch chat does not mean you have to pursue his every move. For the time being, though, we're back underway with game number three. At the end of this one, we're going to be well and truly over halfway through day two. And of course, with that being said, there's still a lot of games to be played, a lot of points to be given out, and still 33 slots to confirm for finals day tomorrow. Already we've said goodbye to a substantial amount of players. Dropped to 82 within the first minute or so of this game kicking off. We've already lost a fair few teams as well. Things are getting spicy. Of course, as we jump further and further through these games, we expect more people to disconnect like we have done every week. And of course, on top of that, we expect more players to die in the early stages. For the time being, though, Everyone quite content on what's going on. And as we look at Lucas in Weeping Woods, he seems to have a very quiet start for him and his team. Yeah, really quiet start for this trio for the time being. They're not getting up to much, but Steve McGill, he's getting up to a little bit now as he's being put under a little bit of pressure. He managed to hit a nice shotgun shot there. As now, if he has that wall, he's actually just going to build up and away for the time being. He's on to 32 HP. He doesn't have any healing. He needs to heal up. Needs some help from... Even though it's 7 7 if he can get it. But it looks like he is going to go down. Now, Demonite is all on his own. Demonite has actually picked up another kill, though, as he now has a look. He's on three. He'll be looking to find a few more. For the time being, he's just going to sit ready and waiting. Bam coming on through. Going to try and back away. And for now, he's just going to try and build out. He is going to be surrounded, however, so I don't hold out much hope for him. I think he will be taken out. I think he will be eliminated. And I think that's going to be it for himself and his trio for game number three. He's not quite out just yet. He is hovering around his box. Looking to edit his way on forward. Looking for say, but instead, we look elsewhere to Koraloki. He was going to ring out a few shots towards that player, and a car actually doing a substantial amount of damage with that AR. And it's a push back around. I'll take his time at least. A shotgun blast to the dome, but he'll down at that. Who so has? He goes for the shakedown as well. On to Acne as well. Leans to just a bit more damage. Got back on our way. Darts rattling on through. Coralic still looking to cower. Run away. From the point of contact. Still the first zone going to continue to make its way on in 8 seconds. Until it begins to move. But Demon are actually still in the picture. And in fact I think he's got an advantage. He's found the height back from the duo. And so now he will be looking for blood. Edit his way on. Through Dustbot out the player. Destroys the wall but he returns to height. He does not want to over aggress. Does hear the build. Spots out the man. Big damage done. Dropped 84 HP of the original 100 and so now, with this height, he'll be looking to continue his spree. Does spy out Louis below. And now, fine say. Beautiful shot. Once again, big damage. The question is, can he finish the job? Might have just spotted him out as well. He is going to use the med kit to his advantage. Everyone seems to be healing up in this time. A bit of silence. An agreed passiveness. But for everyone else, well, they're looking for their way on forward. He has a grass. He will he catch out the man. He will find him. But the shot doesn't connect. And the most concerning thing about it all, he only has one shot remaining in his lever shotgun. Does find one shot with a pistol, but we'll have to switch out elsewhere. And he does find the hit and the knock. He's going to need to finish the job, and he'll do so. Shotgun shots in his hands. And now he can look to continue and to aggress as he now drops on down. Simply going to use this time to oppress the last player in the picture. Louis up to his right He's going to be below him right now. The question is, will he finish the job? We'll find out shortly. But we are going to jump over to Lan. 
the blue uh, charge shotgun, excuse me. Outside Coral Castle, looking to do some damage. Unfortunately, there are going to be some players that are spamming down the bills from behind, but he has spotted out a player down below. Him and his team will be looking to rush him on down, but he'll return to safety in his teammates' arms. A fight's about to break out. The question is, though, who will return the victors of it? Yeah, now having a look, there is a team now below that they have to kind of deal with. I'm actually just looking at the... Um... Top left, you know, 62 players gone already and two minutes until the storm comes in. So we've lost, you know, a huge amount of players. Even over a third of the lobby is already gone and the first zone hasn't even finished moving in yet. As we see, Xlan, he actually missed very much so with that, uh, with the petrol can as now. He's trying to try and have a look to see if there's anyone down below trying to eliminate yet another trio. But for the time being, he is just going to spam on through. See what he can do. See what he can connect on as... No, there's not too much going on. Everybody just doesn't want to peek out. Nobody wants to lose their head. They're playing really, really passive. Especially the players on the low ground here. They know the danger that they're in. Um, so they're just going to maybe try and get away if they can at all possible. But for the most part, the team above them, they're just sitting ready and waiting. They're just going to hold them. Now... Spivak is going to build up. He's going to take a little bit of damage on the way up there. Now he's just going to box up and heal for the time being. The spam coming on through and he actually gets rattled through that. And he's wasted a mini there as well. And now minis are going to be dropped over from Shucks. As now I believe all those builds are on fire. So they need to be kind of a small bit careful. The spam is coming on in through. Spivak now having a nice few shots onto er Erky, I believe. Now it hits a shotgun shot as well. Lexlan being put under a little bit of pressure on the right hand side of your screen. So Beck hitting some nice shotgun shots if you can. Now they have the high ground and now we'll begin to put this team, this blue team, under a little bit of pressure. But Spebeck, he's been built up on Lexlan. Gonna hit a shot and he is gonna be knocked there now. He is gonna be taken down. He is gonna be eliminated as now Lexlan tries to get down on true shucks. Is gonna be knocked on over. I believe there's only one more player left than he is taken care of rather quickly it's going to be three kills in the bag for this trio we've lost 11 of them already now these players get ready for a bit of early fighting again for Ursi as well because he has wiped that other team towards coral castle he's going to have free reign of all of the loot here and this means he's going to be in a really comfortable position pushing forward great he doesn't have too many materials but he's got the opportunity to build some up but now there's another fight ringing out now for tonus who's I'm going to try to shut down one of these early members. He'll lose his shields, he'll lose a bit of HP as well. But it will not matter. He's able to get away, which will give him a chance to heal up a little bit before turning his attention back around to these players above him. Trying to rejoin his team for the fight to try and help out. Able to damage down one, able to tag up the second. Then able to find them for the time being as we continue trying to just get up on top of them. His teammate's fallen. He's the last one left standing. And in a one versus one, can he come out on top? We'll have to see. He'll hear the shots come out. He's able to do a bit of early damage. Unable to find the kill. Those will continue trying to rotate around and continue to try and get out on top of these members for the time being. As he continues trying to edit his way through, it's all havoc for the time being. Again, just not quite able to get out on top. Hunting for this member, it'll take damage from above though. The bait setup comes into fruition as we try to just lose these players in amongst the kind of nuances of this structure. Desperately trying to edit his way on through. But as he goes, these players are wary of him. He'll eat another fish, able to stay alive for just the time being. But suddenly the hunter becomes the hunted. Of course you'd be the only person to use the word nuances. What's wrong with the word nuances? Such, that is such a crammer word. Nuances? But, yeah, Tonus, still very much alive, but only with 66 points of health. Has one more flopper and one more mini to his name. He's going to have to at least try and pop them for the time being, though he is being oppressed. The flopper doesn't even pop, and so now it's a bit of a tricky situation. As we have a look towards the map, we're seeing a fair few teams rotating from that right-hand side. And for the time being, well... Everyone's going to be quite content with playing passive. 49 players still within this lobby. As you mentioned, Jack, it is quite a scenario in which everyone will just be dropping in the early stages. We get into that late stage where people don't particularly want to sit around and wait. They just want to get points. For now, well, there's plenty of time for that to happen. We've got a bit of silence. And that's about it, really. That really is it. There's nothing too much to comment on in this scenario. It is going to be the, the calm before the storm. And unfortunately, for the time being, well, 
you know, it's going to happen. We're just going to wait and see for the next uh, for the next couple of engagements to happen. I guess there's nothing too substantial going to happen for about a minute or so as teams will happily rotate on in towards this new zone. Yeah, everybody going to happily rotate in the zone. Everybody seems happy enough for the time being. We're not going to see too much action. You know, we're down to 50 players. But yeah, I'd have to agree with you, Ryan. Nuances is definitely a Kramer word. If there were, ever was a Kramer word, it was going to be a... So sorry to come back to that. But... Uh, yeah, no, uh, we just kind of see everybody farm up. Everyone just, they're in the zone. They don't have to take fights, so they're not going to take them. So it's going to be boring for the next few minutes. Uh, apologies for that. But, you know, it's just part of the game. Everybody just has to farm up. Everybody has to wait until the engagement is made. And now, uh, it's now Salty Terrace is, what, four or five teams here? It's in and around the same area, but we're just going to see Klez edit and reset and edit and reset and edit and reset as he's just going to sit in the building see if he can find anything but you know there's not going to be too much uh going on here for the next few moments so peter i'm going to put you on the spot anyone impressed you so far over the day over the day oh you really have put me on the spot now i don't know if it was in this game i don't know if it's on what we've seen but um i know that currently rank one is um the vortex saw and he hasn't actually, and Hycrix and his team, they haven't actually won a game, but they've got like 28 kills in their first game. And I just love it when players are that aggressive, when they get that close and personal to their opponents. I just love it when they try to take fights rather than play this kind of passive approach to playing the zone. Yeah, I'd agree with you. You know, like it's, uh, it's a part of the game. And I mean, I respect it. It's, you know, tactics. You want to get to the end of the zone so you're going to see them mm. play passive but i mean who doesn't love just seeing pure action just pure w key and just seeing if they can take down we've seen like sheer aggression over the tournaments um every time we really spectate uh tyson you know you see it there as well like i remember i believe it was tyson and ugwe in the very first one that we did mm. they finished yep. with like 36 kills in one game and that was absolutely insane because they were just w key and everybody and winning every engagement it was absolutely ridiculous um but for now you know we're just going to see everybody box up it's going to be a little bit boring sadly without a doubt for now let us make their way over i'll try to do the odd bit of damage wherever possible as these players move their way on Ford Soldier Towers, a fair few teams actually set up around here. So we're going to see a lot of content, a lot of damage done now. So until we do, let's see how they fare moving forward. As for the most part, it looks like we might see seven or eight teams all look to really just fight against one another for the time being. Way Q, he'll just try and farm up some mats, realizing how pivotal it will be to a success. And well, with teams spread out like this and in this sort of stalemate, they should, luckily the zone comes in. Otherwise, we may see this sort of Mexican standoff going for continuity. But for the most part, we do wait for them to all just move into one another. And as that zone moves on in, we will hit that full zone any second now. And well, with only 49 players left, at least we are well clear of a storm surge. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that we're going to rule Storm Surges out of the equation at this moment, at least. We'll have to see basically nobody die in the next zone in a bit to, to even threaten a Storm Surge, I do believe. And even then, you know, players will start getting kills no matter what. So I don't think it will be in this game. But for the time being, as you mentioned, Jack, I mean, it's going to be fairly quiet. There's nothing too much happening. Teams are just going to rotate on in towards this new zone. Nothing too substantial going on. Yes, there are a couple of shots rattling on out and unfortunately it's going to be quite a silent approach team's just going to try and build on up that's about it they're not going to try and give all too much away we see off in the distance a fair few teams but nothing really too iconic happening we have a look in on the map well you know it's it's not going to be too substantial you see teams are fairly spread out we pull up the names of all the players that momentarily you can see you know, there's a fair few people in this crowded area, and as this zone continues to move on in, they are going to have problems. Nello, though, is going to be under a little bit of threat. He's going to be dropped the majority of his shield. And there are going to be a couple of shots rattling on through the P90. Most certainly going to look to connect at least to the build. But everyone playing very, very passive. There's no need to over-aggress, and they realize this quite swiftly. And they're just going to post on up. Nothing too much happening for the time being, though. It's going to be a bit of silence. And as expected, they're going to wait for the next zone to form and 
flood on in towards the map and push everyone even closer together. But I reckon in around two to three minutes or so, we're definitely going to see the change of pace. That pick up, everyone's going to be looking for kills left, right and centre. But for the time being, it's just about oppression. Uh, yeah, now we see 47 players left in the server. Uh, just answer a question in the chat. I don't think Savage is in this game. I'd say we would have seen the kill by now. So, as now we see players dropping on through. It's actually going to be Smodzo that's going to pick up two or three kills in the end. They're on six now for the time being. As now 44 players are left. There's 16 trios. As 25 seconds until this fourth zone begins to move. You know, everybody... For the most part, they're either in the zone or they're very close. It's only going to be really Nella and his trio. They have to go a little bit of a distance. There's players towards the south side that have to really rotate in. Um, but they have the... It looks like they have the uh, crystals to do so. So, they're going to use them for rotation. As now, the zone is going to begin to move. Another flopper picked up. Nella can drop over those peppers if he wants. He can throw one at least to his teammate before taking one himself. But... For the time being, he's just going to have a look, see if there are any spare mats lying around in these builds after them quick kills. And uh, now, going to rotate on in. Looking at the zone, everybody, you know, is pretty on top of each other for the most part. You know, especially over to this um, east side. As now, we wait and see. Not too much going on. Again, not too much engagement. Everybody's already in or there's only maybe one team rotating in. And for the most part... They have a free rotate. Nobody is focusing them because I don't hear any shots, really. Uh, there's players being built up on over there to the left. It's going to be T. Aspecto that is going to be knocked. As now Nella has popped that pepper and has rotated in. I believe they're nearly in the zone. T. Aspecto 2 has been taken down. Out eight seconds left in the or for the fourth zone to finish moving. The fifth zone is going to begin to form. There's a lot of drops actually still here, so you know we might see maybe a few teams tarping out just to maybe pick up them. Could pick up some heals that could win you the game. Could pick up uh, a nice gun that will help you win the game. You never know what could be in them. That is the your joy of them or the idea of them. You don't know what you're gonna get until you open them of course but for now 25 seconds fifth storm begins to form and there's gonna be a big rotation for a few teams here away on forward 16 teams are left standing for the time being and we'll have to see how they fare for the most part as this zone in just a few seconds will start moving starting to really force these players out of position and well say you'll try and do a bit of early damage he's not able to do so with these players caught out in the open and a lot of these teams actually biting that bullet and moving without cover so ambitious to say the least to say we'll try to shut down one of these members again ring out a few shots wherever possible but for the time being it's gonna be a nice early shot there it's a player who's already down but he doesn't quite get that killing blow instead he'll continue trying to do damage wherever possible as he is the only team spamming down this team Again, this little team of red players here. Again, it's a lot of damage, but Say just can't quite finish the job. As he'll look elsewhere, he's got more players to worry about. I think it's almost, well, out of all the 16 teams, and most of them are in the same structure as Say. Again, all of them fighting amongst themselves. All of them trying to break one another's box. All of them trying to invade one another's personal space. And, well, while these definitely don't abide by social distancing laws, they are still definitely going to come out of the, with a victor. That's the time being, they'll continue fighting one another. Let's say he even has a petrol can there to really help out with the destruction of these buildings, at least for the time being. Absolutely, everyone now going to have to make their way across towards Salty Towers. It's a fair distance to go for some of these teams, especially for Say and their team. I'd expect for them to take the low ground here. I really would. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect for them to try and build all the way across because it might just cost them. And of course, well, they do have bounce pads, so... It could be a fair possibility that they rotate using them, but, I mean, it is any possibility at this point. They've still got three seconds to figure out what they want to do before the zone even starts moving. And so right now, well, everyone plays that little more passive. They do spy out the players to their right, and while they have used a bounce pad for themselves, there will be a storm surge warning cutting on out. And we see now, it is the aggression, relentlessness, safe. Going to take two shots to the body. He's dropped to low HP. 
and the aggression will will take him down. Excuse me, Nako to pick him up and finish off his kill. I think that was his second of the game. I apologize if I'm wrong, but oh, that's going to be big damage done. Alawar, he's dropped to half health simply because of full damage. He's able to connect the builds back on up though, and so him and his team will be able to retain that height. They'll be looking to do some more damage. Legendary pistol in his pockets, looking to aggress on forward more and more. 10 seconds until this zone fully forms, and so everyone on the server right now looks to make their move on forward. It's simply a time for oppression time for damage it's not going to be there trying to rush into people's boxes just yet because they've still got well over two minutes to do to do any of that before the zone even closes in on them and we just have a look you know 13 players are left the storm search is going to go away 13 players or 13 trio should i say left in the server now as war just gonna start spamming through the build with that legendary pistol seeing if he can find anything at all as now we're gonna wait and see 28 players left in the server. Now down to 25 as a trio is eliminated. They are taken completely out of the server. We're down to 10 trios all in all. Alawar doing a lot of damage with this pistol. And indeed that blue tack shotgun. Going to begin to tarp on in. Try and keep height where at all possible. But now we're not going to see too much on the high ground for him. As Alawar gets really aggressive. And he might just have bitten off a bit more than he can chew. He needs to try and get back up onto the high ground where his teammate is. As now he tries to take a floor at least and have a look down into the box below. He sees floppers. And there's some splashes there as well that he can pick up. He is only on 66 HP, so he might need to use those. And he's going to pop the minis now as we wait and see 22 players left. 10 trios all in all. As now Alawar trying to look for a shot through these bills. He's trying to just break them, try and get the floor or the wall try and rattle off a few shots but there's nobody near him for the time being they're all a lot lower down as you know he's looking to add to that tally they're already on 10 kills so it's an insane kill game from them i believe 50 points all in all before placement even comes into it this huge block is gonna be taken down alawar doing a little bit more damage as well he needs to be careful somebody drops on down into the box and he is gonna get taken down and I mean, that's always the problem when you get too aggressive. You know, when you're looking for the kills, as he was doing, it's always the danger that you run. He's going to be taken down. Kami is going to be knocked, and he's going to be taken down as well. Now they're going to be finished off as now we wait. He is just going to explode into a puddle of loot. And now we have five trios remaining. Eight now left in the server. To be honest, I'd fancy a KPI jo Joseph. And Artis Murte, even though they lost their trio earlier, they're still on the high ground and they have a good bit of builds to stay there. My worry for them, though, is that they do not have any utility, at least for health. So they're going to have to take this victory through kind of TKO rather than through just the survival game. As for now, they spot players trying to jump on out. They're able to get a shotgun blast off that player down below. So continue trying to do damage wherever possible. Joseph, though, he's got players above him to worry about. Continue making his way forward. This was so able to try and tag down one another. But he's also going to fall with both players down on the ground. Joseph, he'll be nullified. Four teams left. Five players left standing. Andrew Wax again, just trying to heal up however he can. But he falls very low on HP in the process. He's got bandages, but what good are they going to be? It's, he'll just walk out and die. That, that's awkward for him as for the time being these teams these players look to hold as this Mersey tries to do the same thing he'll shoot a player out of midair a great shot for the time being but he's unable to get the final kill not that it matters Ursi falls and Artis Mersey will find the victory yeah absolutely great game from them bog standard 15 kill victory royale in their pocket they're going to be quite chuffed about that one as we'll have a look on over towards the Intel moments. And of course, what, what better way to kick it off than Alawar, the man that had all the aggression in this game. This is a very smart play to try and take the aggression, but someone just dropped right on into his box. And that was the unfortunate turn of events. Joseph and his teammate Artis were to say the eventual winners, as Joseph actually eight kills at this point. So he picked up two more before he went down. As you can see, just applying the pressure legend, or rather purple scar in his hands. Looking to try and do something. Very nice shot with the lever shotgun, of course, as he aggressed at this point. Very nice shot, 103, but went down. But he did enough damage to that player that he is able to get himself another kill. Andrew Wax, I had no clue what he was doing here. He had 15 bandages and just decided to sit in the zone. But look, 
All that matters is that his team were able to take a third place. Huge points in their pocket. And at the end of it all, it was Artis Muerte that got the victory royale. As I mentioned, 15 kills in their pockets. Plus the 70 points for the victory. They're going to be ecstatic about that one. And, well, that's going to pump them up in the leaderboard. Yeah, I think, what, 15 kills, that's around 75 points. So you're looking at a 145 kill game, or 145 point game, excuse me. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know about bog standard, right? And, uh, it's a bog standard game, yeah, 15 true, kills. True, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that now, but uh, they'll be pretty happy with that. I believe that is game three, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, game number four should be coming up very shortly. Please don't go anywhere.
Welcome back everyone, we're back in the action, back in business and back underway once again of course are going to be our fourth of five games today and we're interested to see what can each team bring to the table, the battle bus packs once again as we jump into the action for our penultimate game of playoffs before we head to finals day and of course day one we had the open day, the qualifier, this is playoffs and then we have the finals day tomorrow. Nonetheless, of course, the wonderful trio here, Zerfa, Retro, and Crema. And of course, in the our lovely ears is Pepito. And our observer for today is Swather. So props to them as always. And of course, as we jump into the action, well, I'm expecting Sparks to fly. I don't know about you, Jack, but I expect after the last game, the amount of kills we saw from the get-go, I expect to see a hell of a lot of kills in the get-go. Yeah, I expect to see, you know, it's uh, the penultimate game. We're going to get underway here. We're going to see a lot of players just get aggressive because, you know, they have to actually have good games or they're going to be knocked out. You know, you want to be making it to the final day. You need to start racking up points on the board. I'm just going to have a quick look at the leaderboard over to my left, I believe. Top, well, number one is High Crit Vortex and... Coliseum, who are on 310 points. Let's have a look at 33rd, though. That is where it all lies. 164 points for the third place, or the 33rd place uh, trio for the moment. And if I scroll down, yeah, there's about 60 points in between, you know, 133rd. So, you know, it's a, not too much of a gap, but, you know, you're, you're going to need a big game in the last few if you want to, you know leapfrog everybody else you need to definitely pick up maybe a victory or maybe even a second place but you want to be racking up probably upwards of six seven kills just to be up or just to be in and around there as well as now we actually see vortex gonna pick up a knock we're gonna see baby boo just tag up that boat for a little bit of damage as well we've already lost five trios which is absolutely insane i believe vf jerky is after knocking himself um vortex is after picking up another kill sketch and they're getting a knock as well so what we're down 22 players already so it's a huge number we're only just getting started then 22 players five trios are already gone and i don't know if storm surge is going to come into the equation not at least until maybe the uh the third or fourth zone yeah, for the time being, we'll wait to see just how they fare moving forward. But as you mentioned earlier, the fact so many teams have died this quickly means that for the most part, we may end up with a really serious lull between this kind of third to kind of fifth zone where everyone has their position. Everyone just wants to work from there. For now, we might see a few more kills come out simply because we're going to have to wait to see how everyone fares kind of maneuvering their way towards this zone. But for the most part, it is going to be just the odd pot shots here and there, but nothing too substantial to say the least. Absolutely. It is Timians that's going to try and rattle off a couple of shots towards Catty Corner. Unfortunately, they aren't going to do all too much in that department. They're looking to try and get their hands dirty, however. Flick going to find a kill. Exposito dropped to the floor. As we continue to watch on in, they are going to take the aggression. Try and take them their way forward. And by the looks of things, though, they've already evacuated up the hill. They will not be in sight, but they might have just spotted them now. I'm not too sure. But for the time being, we've already depleted the third of our lobby. We're down to two-thirds, 67 of the original 98, 26 of 33 teams still within the picture. As we have to wait and see what will happen next. Catty Corner most certainly going to be populated. Players across the board right now. The question is, though, who will be the ones that pull ahead? Baby Booth or Baby Boo, excuse me, looking for his entry into this game his team yet to pick up a kill but most certainly looking to shift that into a positive later on they might just be playing for placement as far as i remember this team didn't make it to finals week last week or if they did it was definitely by the skin of their teeth so maybe this week they're coming back for vengeance coming back for a more dominating performance but for now they're just going to hold on farm up and give themselves every opportunity to get themselves some placement points. Relaxation is the word I'd use for the time being. Because most certainly, everyone is going to take that relaxed approach to this game. They don't want to over-aggress. For some, well, they need the kills. And so they'll continue pushing on forwards to try and ruin other people as well. But for the majority of the server, they're going to play as passive as they can. And try and find their way later into the game. Player, drop to the floor. It'll be a quick kill. Smock going to pick up the kill. 
And now, well, things are going to fall silent. Yeah, things are going to fall silent. We're going to see a res here from Arya Luke, who's just going to pick up ads as he fell in a previous fight, or maybe even in a fight that's still going on, because Kid Smock is in and around a few bills, just knocking about, having a look, see what he can find. And ads and Arya Luke, you know, they're pretty low. So this could be definitely a good engagement for a kid smock to take. As now, Arya Luke gonna try and get in the box. He's actually been coned here. He needs to be careful. Could be edited on down. But for the time being, he survives. He's only on to 78 HP. Having a look for a kid smock. If he can, a big charge shotgun shot. To get the knock, he'll get the finish as well. All is gonna be left on ads. And another charge shotgun shot is gonna be kicked. Or hit, should I say. As now kid smock. He's picked up three kills. His teammates though. They have fallen by the wayside earlier on. I wonder if he has even picked up the reboot cards. But judging by the way that he's running, he is running directly towards that reboot van. So I would assume that he has at least one of them. Um, he might be able to bring his teammates back. And they might have a chance of actually doing something pretty decent in this game. Of course, 22 teams are still left. 56 players are still alive for the time being. And it's only, you know, 2 minutes and 30 seconds until the first storm closes. So there's still plenty of time. And we're already down nearly half the lobby. Another knock coming in there. Vortex going to pick up that one. And Zelix finding one just before he goes down onto Ova. But, you know, it's really, really kicking off in this one. It's absolutely uh, insane how fast-paced this game is. Vortex is going to be knocked. And he actually is going to be finished off there. As Hive J will pick up one more. But, uh... You know, I was expecting a quick game, Peter, but not this quick. Yeah, I mean, I thought we were going to have, you know, a bit more of a lull, a bit more pre-game where we could talk about the games beforehand. But the reality is the first zone hasn't even finished yet. And we've only got 55 players remaining. It's from here onwards. Are there any more players to fight? Like, realistically speaking, because with such disparity and with such a like, sparse zone, the reality is we're just going to have to wait to see how they fare. Because, you know, it's going to be the most part where we see a few shots around here or there. It's too substantial. And again, we see more teams looking to fight. Absolutely. Shots breaking out across Stealthy Stronghold, but Nortley looking to disengage quite swiftly. He will be eyeing up his opponents off in the distance. But for them, they just want to survive, as you mentioned, Peter. You know, there could have been some time to talk about pre-game, but everyone just seems to be going at everyone's throat right now. They just want to try and get themselves their way into the leaderboard. And kills most certainly are the way to do that in the short term. But in the long run, if you don't make the late game, if you can't find yourself some points for placements, then it will cost you. And so for some of these teams, well, they'll realize that we can hold on. We just have to play for placement. We're already a third of the way through the lobby in terms of teams. And so at this point in time... They'll be looking quite comfortable heading into this one. They might just run over towards this supply drop, though. Fortunately, it is very close proximity, and they will do so. But we've just lost another trio. It's Jay that's fallen. And in fact, right now, everything seems to be a little more silent. There isn't too much going on. No one's going to be holding the W key as much, because I think we've gotten to the stage where it's going to be very, very quiet for the next couple zones, because everyone that's left... Is looking to play for placement. Either because they've had a monstrous game in terms of kills already. Or they need to get the points to make top 33. And so for the majority. Well they'll just be looking to play passive. Post up. Not over aggress whatsoever. As the storm will shrink in two minutes. The second zone looking to form. We've only just seen the first storm form. And we've burnt our, ho our whole lobby in half. 50 out of 98. About to become 49 by the looks of things. As Neox is just picked up one but it is actually nipsey that goes down so everyone quite content on their positioning right now shots gonna rattle on off Nortley missed shot missed opportunity and they'll be looking to rotate on in still plenty of time but fortunately for the majority of these sides they won't run into many players and so rotations are going to become quite easy yeah rotations are going to be pretty much free here because you know there's so many people already gone you know, uh, there's so many people already eliminated. There's not going to be many people standing in their way. So you're going to have a free go of it. You're going to be able to farm up some mats as we have a quick look 
at the map and you just see where everybody is. There's actually a decent few people still in the zone there. A few players towards Colossal Coliseum, Hunter's Haven, then indeed down towards Slurpy Swamp. And you know, the dangers with being towards Slurpy Swamp and Hunter's Haven is just on the edge of the zone, there is players ready and waiting. We see that cough is just sat in a sandball here. He's just going to begin to move on around. Needs to be careful. I believe Faze Phoenix is over here. And yeah, he spots him out. And he does not want any of what he is selling. He is going to just hide away for the time being. But Faze Phoenix is actually pretty low. He's a good bit of shield. But look at his health. It's probably in there in the 30, 35 mark. So, you know, it, it could be a big kill. And actually, there's another player rotating in now. If Sekov just waits, he's going to jump out. And now he is going to be spotted by one player at least. Phoenix now will be aware that there is at least one player behind him. But now with 10 seconds left, they're going to have to start rotating towards the zone. Because this second zone is going to start moving. And Phoenix and his team, they could be in a little bit of trouble. Especially, there's still a team still in the storm there. If you can see that at the bottom right of your map. Those lads are definitely in a lot of trouble. Um, and could definitely just be knocked to the storm. Again, for the time being, it's going to be a moment before these players move on in. Kopf will take a bit of early damage to kick things off again as they take a moment to just hold for the time being. They, uh, they don't commit anywhere just yet. Instead, they wait for the zone to come on in, taking their time with their rotation. And they play to his detriment, but you need to mind. Despite all the contact we've seen, despite all the fighting, we're still only in the first zone. Players aren't really going to take that much damage. You know, Kopf, he's been in this zone a while. He's only, you know, he's only lost about 25 HP, so he'll be completely fine just to rotate in. Again, the players still being taken down. So this really has just been a kind of combat intensive game. And it means that this is a lull. It's still going to happen, but it just happens later on. And it means that we do have a while to catch up to it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as you mentioned, I've got plenty of time. There's no real need to, to rush anything. We won't expect a couple of kills, at least for a good while. You know, 46 players still in the server, but only just the second zone moving in as we get a good look right now. You see, I mean, there's, there's, there's a fair few people. Don't get me wrong. We are going to see some action, but the problem is... It's not going to be substantial. They're just going to shoot each other's builds. Everyone's going to post up. They're just going to wait for the zones to collapse on him. Because there's no way you can take an active gunfight with this circle of size with 45 players. Because everyone's just going to look right at you. Phoenix is going to bite the dust. It's Bradle that finds the kill. And we drop to 45. 19 teams. In fact, someone's just been resurrected. Brought back from the dead. In fact, as we're back up to 46. The original number. And I'm guessing that resurrection happened right at Holly Hedges. But for now, though, everything sits still. Obviously, players are going to move around, but the kill count most certainly going to stay quite the same. Zweeb, well, or Zweeb Elf, who knows? God, some of these names, they get to me. But for the time being, everyone, of course, they are just going to hold on. No one's really going to overgress all too much. Everything looks quite content on every part. No one's really too over-aggressive. There's no need to take the aggression. Let the action come to you. And most play people will realise this. A couple of kills here and there. But all in all, this is going to be all there is for a little while. No one really up for the fight. They just want to rotate on in. Engagement made. But of course, nothing too substantial. As there are 45 seconds until the third zone starts to move into its fourth. I can only wait and see what happens. Yeah, missing a shot there by Zvibelt as now just going to begin to swim on forward. Going to go for a snipe shot if he can. I believe uh, Owen and Nipsey and their trio have been eliminated. I think I saw that in the top left-hand corner of my screen. And there's a legendary charge shotgun here. Now, it'd be interesting to see if Nero is actually not going to pick that up. Um, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, not a big fan of the charge shotgun. Hopefully his teammate picked that up because... That can hurt you an awful lot. I don't think uh, that is a weapon that you want to let fall by the way. So I think that is definitely a weapon that you want to bring with, uh, with you. But maybe he was just leaving it for one of his teammates at least. As Lyra, I believe, is going to be knocked and is going to go down. Nero now just going to build on in. Just going to tarp on in underneath the mountain. There's a team above them on the height that are putting a little bit of damage down below. Just onto the build. But for the time being, they are pretty safe as now... Another knock coming to come in. Kid Smock is actually going to be knocked there by Baby Boo, but not before he gets a knock himself onto Scholar Find. 
And now, with 40 players left in the server, Kid Smock just being fully eliminated, you know, it's going to probably get a little bit hectic now as teams begin to rotate in. This will be a pretty interesting uh, zone to end on. I wonder exactly where it is going to go, especially the moving zone could cause a few problems, especially if that mountain is still going to be in play. You know, building up a hill is always pretty annoying to deal with. But if you're on top of it, you can just apply pressure down below and you can just, you know, really punish players' builds. And of course, if they've no builds, they can't keep you out. And if they can't keep you out, they're going to die. So... That, if that comes into play, it should be pretty interesting. But for now, Queasy Fishy, Raxo, and Paco, they're just going to begin to rotate on in. It looks like they are going to be rather uncontested. Paco going to spam through that bush, see if he can hit anyone. But nobody is going to be hiding in it today. As now he actually takes a few shots. He is down to 52 shield. He does have a big pot if he wants to pop that and get back up to full. And it looks like he is going to do so for the time being fourth zone begins to form he is gonna have to rotate a bit again but there's a few teams already in there and to be honest i think they're gonna hold absolutely everyone that is already in there that uh that blue team is gonna be hell to deal with and they are gonna definitely punish people that are on the outside do you jack do you think that's um with the big pots when you the animation when you drink them you miss a lot of the pots a lot of it just misses yeah. your mouth do you think that a pot is actually worth 75 shields and you're just really messy drinkers oh that is way too much thought to be putting into that i'd say over half is like missed so i'd say that the the full pot heals for 100 but it's just because you yeah. you miss so much it, you, you only get half there you go, kids. That's why you show some manners because you could have, you you might need that extra fifty shields one day. Yeah. Don't be don't be a messy drinker. Drink responsibly. Oh my god! I've never actually put any thought into that at all. But now that now that you've pointed it out, I'm never gonna like. You're never gonna unsee it. Yeah, literally, I'm never gonna never... unsee that. Every time I see somebody drinking a big pot, it's like. Yeah. You're wasting that. You're spilling that all it, over the floor. It is. Will you aim for your mouth, please? <laughs> Same with the minis just, as well. Just uh, take your time. Breathe, man. Uh, <laughs> Same with the floppers as well. Like you, you only take one bite out of them, and it's a fish that heals you. Like that's true. Take take, an, take another bite. And like, is it like an apple? Do you eat it off the bone, or do you take bones? That, you know, take bones at all. Like, this is some serious stuff. <laughs> Who knows, man? There's got to be some lore out there that teaches us the the real oh, way. Oh, I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> No, that, it'll be Tobriana. Tobri that's how you say it. It'll take a bit of early damage from the low ground as well. Just ring out shots wherever he can just to make people's lives a bit difficult. So try to rotate around towards this zone. Just try to just do the damage he can, however he can, wherever he can. As he'll continue making his way on for trying to catch out one of these members. As for the time being, I'll just go for the high ground and continue fighting. Absolutely right now, 10 seconds until the zone fully closes in. Storm 4 about to become fully active and Storm 5 will kick on in, of course, 9 until it fully closes. As it will continue to move on in, it will shrink again in 50 seconds. And unfortunately for Toborama and his team, they've got a hell of a distance to cover and they've only got 50 seconds until it starts moving. And so they're going to have to look at doing it quite quickly for the time being though. And looking to try and apply some pressure. But unfortunately, all they're doing in this scenario is drawing more attention to themselves. And that will then in turn put a little bit more pressure on them. I'm wondering though, will they actually use any form of rotation here? Of course, he's got the pepper in his inventory. He could use that to run across in lightning speed. Instead, by the looks of things, they're just going to ride the circle around. And by the looks of things, that's what the majority of teams are going to do. They're not going to try and take that quick rotation through the middle. They are going to quite literally hug the outside of the storm and get on in for Zach. We've seen this man before from the AOS team. He's done a great job. I think they got to finals day, I do believe, last week. Maybe I'm dreaming and maybe it was only second day. But I certainly a team that can do it if they do it well. Spots out the man. Fires off the shot. Missed opportunity. Could have been big damage, unfortunately. Just shy as the rest of the squad will cower just west of Sweaty Sands as... Everyone going to try and lay on the pressure towards each other. Nothing too substantial happening right now. As shots continue to rattle on out. It's Gamma Thomas to take down Wills. 
And in fact, Zeri the King to drop Wills as well and finish the job nicely. Vibes is going to get taken down. Makik is going to find the kill. And I do see the Guild Boys up top as well. Of course, Flick and Anna's joining Thomas. And they have immense height over everyone right now. The question is, will they be able to retain it heading into these later zones? Five storms in. About to become six as it continues to move on in. And the sixth one will form shortly. Right now, though, the height seems to be the most dominating factor. We've seen it time and time again from game two. From when Tohash had the height. High ground always wins people. And so... You've really got to be careful for these men, especially with the stature that they have. It's looking great. And to be honest with you, I'm excited to see what happens next. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens next. You know, uh, I'm just sitting and waiting to see what is going to happen. Of course, Flick, Thomas and Anis, you know, these trios, we've seen them so much. I believe they won the last one as well. We're going to see a knock there from Anis. Uh, Zwiebel is going to be taken down. Flick going to finish off that kill for his teammate. Now going to build on up, realizing that there is a little bit of pressure coming on here. Just building up, trying to get a high hit in these shots. Absolutely insanely accurate. Flick is, is now uses the bouncer to get up on top of the high ground, building a ramp above his teammate. Now just going to try and get over towards either Anas and Thomas. Just try and group up together. There's a player using a bouncer coming over. It's over and it is definitely over for you because you are out of the game. No chance of a res coming in there either. There's now Flick up on top of the high ground doing lots of damage with this shotgun he is raining down holy hell with these shotgun bullets and indeed with his ar when he has it out as anis is actually going to be taken down it's going to be high down chris that is going to pick that one up half done now able to find one as well flick needs to try and use these splashes if at all possible he's taking a little bit of damage he is no or i think he does have a bouncer but he didn't use it there now maybe he doesn't i'm not too sure as he's beginning to take so much damage he's down to 21 hp as the zone i believe begins to go back flick gonna be dropped out of the build for the time being but he is just gonna be able to heal up we are down to nine trios 23 players left in the server and flick he's gonna need a refresh if he can get one here absolutely as the aggression continues across the server everyone right now towards sweaty sands of course just north it is gonna be breaking out left right and center everyone looking to try and make their move and make their mark 20 players as I mentioned, it is going to be hectic. Everyone going to try and do their best right now as they continue to move on in the storm. Continues to shrink and continues to force these players closer and closer together. Drop to 19. It's Skirzimont that finds the kill. It's Chris that falls. And now the aggression has to continue. And Flick, while he's looking for blood, I don't think he's got the HP to facilitate that. Thomas to drop. And they will go out in a respectable 7th place. 17 players still on the mark. though, still ready to smash through the opponents and they're going to try and make their way into that 70 point victory royale france is going to try and eye up a couple of weapons and he'll actually upgrade majorly right now but still 17 players still every opportunity right now everyone looking quite content france is going to try and apply some pressure from about 16 players six teams it's getting quite entertaining now it's getting intense teams there's everything on the line right now in the penultimate game exteriors he's going to be dropped to the floor onto his knees and finish the job it's king to finish the job and in fact francis has picked up a quick knock but it will mean nothing compared to the damage done to his team as they will be reduced to just a two jenk's going to aggress with his teammate they've got no bills they have to hide on the low uh, hide on the low ground excuse me but for everyone else it's only just the beginning and now as we patiently wait to see what is gonna happen for the time being, four trios left. Pack up, up on the high ground, doing lots of damage down below. Just spamming into builds, if at all possible. Francis is going to pick up a knock. As now we lose one more player, it's going to be Scalifying that finds his early demise. As Paco keeps spamming on true, trying to find something. He's hitting a few shots. As now, shot through the build. As Paco, maybe can find something it looks like they're going to try and drop down and get on top of these players if at all possible to find maybe something crazy going to pick up a knock crazy fish nightly there picking up one more a piece as there's a lot of players down right there as now their bills are being shot out now they have to try and get up this mountain i believe it is on a awful position to try and rotate too crazy now is in the storm and he is just popping floppers he is going to be spotted out by paco and he is going to be eliminated it's going to be a 14 kill victory 
Uh, another bog standard one there, Ryan. <laughs> as uh, bog standard, nothing bog more, standard. nothing less. Yeah, exactly. They pick it up. It's going to be a 14 kill victory for them, and that is game number four in the books. That that was a beautiful little kill there, and again they go towards the end. Pretty much how the whole game was: contact heavy, intrusive on people's territories, and very, well, very, very intensive. Again, lots of fighting ring out either way. We're going to look over to Flick right now. He's able to shut down this initial member towards the final zone as well. Just again, just making his way around, trying to catch out these members as best he can. He's able to do so as well by just healing up here. Low on HP, but it will not matter. He has the space. He has the time to get back around. Francis as well here. We turn around here to watch him and Zestorios just try to catch out these initial members. Of course, he jumps in on the whole group accidentally as he's swarmed by all angles. Packer as well, spilling a lot of that slurp juice, so only getting 50 shields back as he'll continue to just rain on damage from above. And that zone, it favoured Paco and Co. really, really well here. That high ground just made their lives so much easier as they just got to shoot down anyone who came their way. Yeah, absolutely. The end of it was near Paco. Just holding, patiently waiting. Nothing too much else. And they were able to get the Victory Royale. No problems at all, as you mentioned. 14 kills in my eyes. Very box standard. Nothing more, nothing less. Ah, uh, yeah, game number four. That is it for that. Coming up next, we do have the final game of the day. Make sure not to go anywhere. It is going to be great.
Hello, 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 and welcome to the fifth and final game of our second day of the Razor Invitational Europe. I do apologize greatly to all of you guys, but if you can see, but this lobby is pretty damn empty. Um, fortunately, we've got into a bad lobby, and with that, see how these teams fare. Granted, they're not going to be able to play for points either, so they are just going to have to buck around for a bit. Um, you know, try and get the old kill here or there, but for the most part, I think this is going to be pretty much all said and done. Is that the demon team that were doing very well from games one to four and could have been stitched up with game five? I really hope it isn't. I really hope it isn't. But look, as you mentioned, Peter, it's a bad lobby. We can't do anything. It sucks. We understand. We are so, so sorry. But at the end of the day, as we mentioned, we don't have control over it. We literally join a lobby, whatever lobby we're putting, we, we're given. We have to we have to work with. So yep. we're working with nothing. Um, for the time being, at least, I think the teams are gonna, are gonna, you know, they're gonna farm up, they're gonna have some fun, do whatever they want. So, um, yeah, how's everyone's day? Uh, pretty good, to be fair. Uh, oh, I've not had a good day, I won't lie. No? no oh, well, to be day. fair, yeah. I, I spent CS, um, CSI had a very passionate fan base, and I got abused for about three and a half hours straight, from literally start to finish. Um, Got a few death threats as well, which wasn't fun. Um, oh, yeah, here we are. I can tell you what, though. It gave me a quite a nice insight, and it changed my perspective, because I thought that, you know, sometimes this Fortnite chat could be toxic. But you know what? This is nothing. This is absolutely nothing. So, <laughs> you know, I'm more than happy to keep going with this now, knowing what the worst could actually be like. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, yeah. yeah, sometimes, sometimes the chat can't be, uh, you yeah. know, really Christmas. nice you know it's sometimes sometimes chat can be ruthless sometimes uh you know the uh just it's it's awful what some of the things you read in chat some of it you just have yeah, to laugh about bad. it you just yeah, have to I, laugh about it though like yeah it's yeah yeah sometimes we just sit back we laugh and you know at the end of the day people seem to forget that sometimes uh casters are human as well and that we have feelings but unfortunately <laughs> no one seems to care about that luckily though we do have these few players of Solary Maggie, and I'm pretty sure he's fairly high up as well. So, no, this just sucks. This must suck as well. Same for Demon. You know, two teams are actually doing really well right now. And so, the person in the chat that asked if we could just spectate some people's streams and mute, um, that's against Twitch's TOS. So, sadly, yeah. no. Um, but what we can do is entertain you with our wit. And I know, Peter, you're, you're quite witty, so you can oh, think of a joke. Do. Dwarves, no. uh, often overlooked. <laughs> That's actually That's quite good, actually. <laughs> I didn't expect that from you. What, you, <laughs> you, expect, you asked me for a joke and then it was surprised I gave you a joke? No, I just, I didn't expect it to be that funny. Uh -huh. I thought it was going to be like, you know... Facts? <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be like, how does a penguin make a house? It glues it together. I thought it was, we were going to get something like, oh, you know... Like, like a Christmas cracker joke. Yeah, exactly. But you actually, you actually came with a banger. I can't lie. Yeah, thank you, I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, don't ask me for any more because I'm out, but... <laughs> Say it, you're done for the day. Yeah, so you're done Pack for the day. Pack your bags, you're going home. <laughs> yeah, um, Jack, who wanna hit us with a joke? Oh, uh, this last game? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I actually don't have too many jokes. Uh, well, not too many I can say on stream without getting... Yeah, uh, having a joke is one thing, it's making it PG. Yeah, yeah. it's, you know... Uh, did you hear about the woman with five legs? No. No. Her knickers fitted her like a glove. <laughs> hope that hope that's PG enough for the stream. Uh, yeah, it's all right. That's that one there now. Jesus! <laughs> oh my, I'm crying. I suppose I could have said trousers, but you know. Yeah. That is... <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah, do you like that? <laughs> Yeah, that was a. Uh, here's a fun story, actually. That's uh, when I was five years old. I my, my dad told me that joke, uh, just thinking, you know, it was harmless. And the next day, I thought it was so funny. I went in and told my teacher. So my dad got a very, very, you know, he got a bad call then the next day from uh, that teacher saying, "Yeah, you'll never guess what your son said in class today in front of oh, all the other children." 
sorry oh, to we sorry got to some action. We, got, we got action. It is going to be the end of the game, quite possibly. Mora going to try and take the height away from Maggie. The big pop being used. Chat, this is the beginning of the game, most likely, because both teams in an intense engagement. The victory royale, zero points up for grabs, zero points for kills. But it's the clout. It's the fact that they won this gunfight that matters the most. Mora going to drop to the floor, down to his knees, but Maggie also going to follow suit. There is going to be a knock, and in fact, a KO. Maggie going to drop to the floor as well as Demon Tiss, the only man left remaining within the victory. He's got one big pot to make it work. And by the looks of things, the blue team will be the victors. The orange, the boys in orange, not the boys in blue. They will be swiftly dismantled out of this one. Demon takes one shot and one shot will be enough. He's down to 12. He's got no shotgun and he's only got three bullets in his legendary pistol. It's gone from bad to worse and chat. It's Maggle. Well, Maggle's out of the equation and so is the demon boys because Troz... His team, Maggle's teammate. Well, <laughs> they they won, they won. They 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 got the victory royale, the most important one of them all. A whole zero points with it. But as much as we can sit here and meme, you know, it's a it's it's a it's a poor way to end the day. But unfortunately, we don't get to choose the lobbies we're put in. So we're gonna bring you all the intel moments of this game right here. And I wonder what they could be. Oh yeah, so much oh. action. Stop so finish. much action. Good. Yeah. The one engagement though that we did see was actually pretty decent, and then uh, Demon Tiss, you know, he, he only he didn't have a shotgun. It was going to be very hard to deal with. You know, the two players that were still alive um, did a lot of damage with the legendary pistol. To be fair, but eventually he got ran down, he got shotgunned, he got taken care of, he got finished, uh, and that is going to be it. But speaking about winners, uh, I believe we can announce the winner of the Razor giveaway. It is going to be Technique. F N B R. You have won the giveaway. You have won the Razor Viper mouse. So make sure to have your whispers enabled, and somebody will contact you. But that was the last game of the day, sadly. And oh, that's that's really it. There's not much more I can say. Yeah, I mean, yes, th thanks, Camp Fans, for coming, everyone. We'll yeah. be able to bring you the action tomorrow. I believe we're starting earlier tomorrow, so we'll be starting at twelve thirty CET tomorrow, and we should aim to finish at about four four thirty ish. So. Be here early for the action tomorrow because that is when we will be bringing you the finals to this Invitational. But until then, that's a thank you from both me, Ryan, Jack, our producer Pepito, and our wonderful observer of Swelder. Again, thank you so much, but I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.